hey guys, uh, everything went really smoothly today with our uh, first classroom sessions that we did, uh, minus the recording function. So I'm going to go ahead and run through everything again really quickly, uh, just as a way for the guys that weren't able to be live with us uh, to get a look at it so that we're all on the same page, uh, and also as a refresher uh, for anyone that was on that wants to look back and go through it themselves again, uh, just to continue learning. Um, so for this year, um, we're going to put names to our bunt coverages. We have two plays. We're going to call them blue and white. With our bunt coverages, everything is very simple. And the number one thing that we can't stress enough is that we have to get an out. Okay, this is a sacrifice bunt situation where the other team is giving up an out. So we're going to make sure that no matter what, we take that out. Obviously, we'd like to get the lead runner. Um, that definitely makes our job easier. Uh, but at the end of the day, if they're giving up an out, we have to take it. So let's make sure we go with the safe one and secure an out. All right, our blue coverage is going to come when the other team has a runner on first base. Uh, and, and what we're going to do there is make sure that we have both sides of the infield covered. Okay, so when they have a runner on first base in a bunt scenario, in our league, once that hitter shows bunt, they slide their top hand up. They cannot pull back and swing. Okay, so as soon as he shows bunt, our third baseman can immediately crash all the way to cover this side of the field. Okay, so the third baseman's responsibility in our blue coverage is the left side of the infield. All right, that leaves the right side of our infield to be covered by the pitcher. All right, we want our pitchers to be athletic. We stress that a lot. One of the reasons that we need them to be athletic is to cover their position. So in a blue bunt coverage, the pitcher is going to cover the right side because the first baseman is staying home. All right, the only time the first baseman is going to get a ball is if it's pushed hard at him. He's going to have to come forward and, and get that ball that the pitcher can't get to, which means the pitcher then goes to cover first base. But aside from that one scenario, the first baseman stays home to cover first base. All right. That's going to leave our shortstop to cover third base, our second baseman to cover second base, our first baseman is staying home to cover first base. All right, to go around really quick one more time. Third baseman crashes and covers the left side. Pitcher crashes the right side. Shortstop has third base bag. Second base has the second base bag. First baseman has first base, and that leaves the catcher. The catcher is our quarterback in this situation. All right, it is his job to direct traffic. He sees the whole field in front of him. And I know catchers, you want to jump out, you want to be involved with that play, you want to scoop it up. Okay? But if you overextend on a ball too far out in front that these guys can get too faster, if you call them off too soon, it's actually going to make that play take longer and break down. It's better for you to allow them to do their job and for you to tell them where they're going with the ball because you can see the field. So in a blue play where we only have a runner on first base, if they see this ball and you see that they have time to get this runner, your call is going to be two. Okay, but if that's going to be too close, we need to secure an out. You're going to let them know to go to one. All right, so catcher, you are the quarterback here. Okay, if you can get that ball that's right in front of the dish and jump up and we can get that lead runner, great. Or if you can jump up and get this guy and make that easy play, great. But don't overextend because that's actually going to break down the play, not be a better situation. Okay, so make sure you communicate with the big boy voice that we joke about in practice because they can't see the play, you can. All right. Moving on to our white play, our white play. I'm going to pause the video really quick just so I can clean up the whiteboard, and I'll be back to show us what the white play is. All right, I'm back to give you guys the white play. Now the difference here is that we're going to have a runner on first and second. Okay, so now on your sheets that I gave your parents for you guys to fill in, I, I put on the white play, there's a read. And the read is always going to be the third baseman. Okay? He is going to stand in a position where he can see the runner in front of him and the play at the plate. Now, if that ball is bunted hard at him, past where the pitcher can cover, they're not going to have a play at third base anyway. So he's going to come get that ball. He's going to read that play. He's going to come get it. He's going to throw across to first base. Okay. So in, the, in a white play, the pitcher has the left side of the infield. The first baseman this time, as soon as he reads bunt, is going to crash and cover the right side. There's no reason to hold this runner on. 
So he's playing in front, and as soon as he reads blunt, he's going to charge. All right. Now our second baseman goes to cover first base because the first baseman will not be there. The shortstop is going to cover second base. And because the third baseman is in a read play, if there is going to be a play at third base, he's able to be here to cover. All right? Because if it's a situation where the pitcher is picking up the ball, or the first baseman is picking up the ball, or even the catcher is picking up the ball, he's not involved and he is here to cover. The only way we're going to get that out at third base is usually a hard bunted ball either back to the pitcher at the first baseman who's covering or the catcher hops on it right away so he'll have time to be there to cover. All right, If he has to leave at all to field the ball, we know our play is going to be at first base anyway and there's no need for him to be there. Okay, That's why we call that a read. All right, So to go around really quick on a white play, third baseman's in a read where he's either coming to fill in this area or cover third base. Shortstop covers second base. The second baseman has to make sure he he runs, he sprints over, and he's at first base. All right, second baseman, I know sometimes you guys get left out of infield plays. It is so important that you do not forget to cover first base here because the first baseman is going to be nowhere close to the bag to cover, and it's going to be really difficult for the pitcher to get over there in this play. So second baseman, you cannot fall asleep. You have to cover first base. First baseman crashes and covers the right side. Pitcher crashes and covers the left side. And again, the catcher's our quarterback. He's directing traffic. He's letting these guys know where they're going with the baseball. All right? Let me clean up the whiteboard again, and then we'll go through our infield pre-play positioning really quick, and that's going to be all for day one. All right. When we talk about infield alignment, these are not plays. These are going to be where we position our infielders before the play starts. We have four positions. So when you hear a coach call out one through four, you're going to know where to stand on the infield. All right? Rarely are we going to ever call out number one because that's our normal alignment. So we've got third base, shortstop, second base, first baseman, all in their standard positions. All right? From that point, we might position a guy to the left, to the right, deeper, shallower, depending on the hitter, depending on the situation. But one is going to be our standard alignment. All right? So when we get into two, when we hear coach call out two, that's going to be our standard alignment for a double play. So that's going to be when we have a runner on first base with our first baseman holding the runner. All right? So we've got a runner on first, which means we want our second baseman and our shortstop to pinch the middle so that we're in a better position to turn a double play. So they're going to slightly pinch towards the bag so that we give ourselves the best opportunity to turn two. We want our third baseman here to fill the hole just a little bit. He still has to be able to cover towards the line. And when our first baseman's done holding the runner, he's going to bounce off and he's going to fill that hole just a little bit as well. All right, so our two is positioning ourselves for a double play. That's our double play depth. All right, when we change that to a three, a lot of times that's going to be where we still want to have our middle guys turning a double play. So they're not going to change at all. But we might be in a situation where it's not a true bunt play that we want to call out, but we want to be in position where we're able to either turn, turn a double play at third base to first or get a force somewhere else in the infield. So now we're going to have our third baseman even with the back, or if the coach calls for it, just slightly in front by the cutout. All right? The first baseman in this situation is not holding that runner. He's either going to be in front or just behind the runner, depending on the situation of the game. All right, but here's a situation where now we have our infield, our corner infielders up, and our middle guy still pinched in double play depth, and that's what we're going to call three. All right, so our corners are up, and our middles are pinched. That's a three. With a four call, gonna get rid of all these guys really fast. With a four call, we want to cut a runner at the plate, all right, or prevent him from trying to score. So now we're bringing everybody up to the infield cut. Now we're going to play on a lot of fields, especially the younger teams that don't have grass. They just play on a skinned infield. So the important thing to understand here is when we're pulled up, 
It's making sure that we are in front of the baseline. All right, standing in the middle of the baseline in this situation is not good. We could get tangled up in the runner. That runner could be a distraction on the ground ball. A lot of things can happen when we get tied up in the baseline. So if there's not an infield cut, we just need to make sure that we are st a step inside the baseline so that whether this runner that's on third base is the tying run, the go-ahead run, an important run that we need to prevent from scoring, we could either field the ball and stop him from going or cut him down with a throw to the plate. And that's going to be our four call. Everybody is pulled up. All right, so it's important that regardless of which position you play, you know your job and responsibility, especially for guys that may play multiple positions. So when you hear one of these numbers called by the coach, we know exactly where to go. It just makes communication easier, and then it allows us, once we get into those preset numbers, to adjust guys as needed versus having to move four guys at once. All right, so day one of e-learning, our classroom sessions, uh, pretty simple. If you have questions after you, after you see the video, uh, have your parents or yourselves email me. I'll be happy to clear it up, and we're going to be doing these every day. So we'll continue to see you guys. Uh, following this, I'm going to go in the back right now, film a, a video, and post our workout. So in addition to the classroom sessions in the early afternoon, we'll have, guys, we'll have stuff for you guys to do uh, later in the afternoon with our daily workouts and continue doing some of the drills that we've been uh, sending out. So stay safe. Spend this time with your families. And again, once we get through all this, we're going to have baseball. So stay excited, guys. See you tomorrow.